Hello guys, and welcome to Sunday Drivers Cup 2022 season, and today we are driving around Laguna Seca. As you can see, I'm starting from second position in front of me, Jordan in Svetanov, and there was only like couple hundreds of a seconds between the two of us, so it was very close. Qualifying, but the race is about to start, green lights, and away we go. Now from third position, it's uh, Stefan Aldering, and from fourth position, Steven Orl. I think Stefan got the best start from the four of us. And it seems like he's maybe diving in, or maybe not, but I left the space inside just in case, but he wasn't diving in, so I was able to maintain my position. And then I was already like trying to find a place to make a move on Svetanov. I knew the first lap with the cold tires, it's uh, maybe easier to make a mistake during the first lap, so I was just trying to take advantage of that. As you can see here, we are going already side by side. But then again, outside line to this left-hander, it's not really like a good line to take. Not a overtaking opportunity, but I tried to do something. Again here, moving to the left just a little bit, but then backing off. Because this is very fast left-hander, there's only like a one line to take. And then I skip uh, one lap already, so we are now starting lap 3. Which is gonna be my fastest lap, and also fastest lap of the race, so I will show it completely here. So using all the track outside, and this is a very nice corner, this double apex. And this new car, uh, they released, or th this car changed during the latest update. I don't know, maybe the setup is same, but they changed some tire parameters, so it's a very much a different car nowadays. It's much more loose, no lively, and it's much easier to throw sideways during the corner, so... Yeah, uh, I, I like it more, I have to say that. But yeah, not so much uh, mistakes during this lap. Maybe here, I don't use all the track inside, so lost a little bit time there, but not a disaster. Then we are coming to this corkscrew, very nice corner, pretty much blind corner, you just have to trust that the corner is there. And I always tend to like short shift to the second gear, just to avoid any wheel spin, or avoid spinning the car completely there. Here just downshift into the second for a extra rotation and a little bit more acceleration maybe. Last corner. Maybe I also made a little mistake here, but not too much. And then getting a good toe from the car in front. And the time is going to be 139.05, so yeah, pretty good lap. It wasn't my fastest lap of all times around here with this car, with this uh, track conditions. During the practice, during my solo practice, I was able to do like 138.8. But I wasn't just able to pull out the lap time during the race or even during the qualifying. Then we have a back marker who is actually uh, giving us space very nicely, so thank you very much. I'm an Alapagos, so much appreciated. Even though he wasn't wasn't that uh, that much slower than us, but he just didn't have anyone to race with, basically, so very nicely done there. So yeah, this track has always been quite good to me. In the first season I almost won around here. I took my... Uh, I led every lap except the last one. And then the second season I started from pole position behind me. Back then was actually Tsvenanov. But we had a little contact and my rinse kind of went downhill from there. But pace has always been good to me here. And this is now lap 6. And I felt like I was always a little bit faster during that second last corner, that right hander. But here I make a little mistake, and not even a little mistake. I go on the throttle very early, almost lost the control there. Just barely managed to keep it out from the wall. And that was really like a wake up call. And now it's a totally different situation. I can see Svenanov going there in a the distance. And then it's only like a couple seconds to third position now, so it's totally different. It's totally different game now. But 
again I have to give a credit for Avanola Pagos. He could have unlapped himself there, that would have been totally fine, but he just didn't. So much, much appreciated. When I do that little control lost, I now lost my toe. And it's going to be interesting to see how much it was affecting my pace after all. And skipping to the end of lap 10, we are starting lap 11. As you can see, I was slowly gaining Svetanov little by little. So at this point I was still like confident that I will catch him and maybe we will have a race towards the end. There are still like 5 laps to go or something like that. And I think the cap is starting to be like within the toe range again. And once I get there it's almost like when you get within a DRS in Formula 1 so you just gain massively after that. Especially in a main straight. And this is now end of lap 13, we are starting lap 14, if I'm not mistaken, yes, so this is lap 14 now. As you can see, I'm right there behind Svetanov now, using all the track outside again. I felt like the second last corner and maybe this uh, double apex corner, those were my uh, strongest points. Then I was a little bit slower maybe during the uh, through the corkscrew every time as we will see in this lap. And besides those corners I think we were pretty much equal in pace. And Svetanov wasn't doing any mistakes or any big mistakes after all and he was holding his lines pretty nicely so I w just weren't able to find a place to make a move. Of course I could do a huge dive bomb somewhere, but well, of course I'm not gonna do that. I'm just trying to build my uh, overtaking opportunity, maybe forcing him to take the unoptimal line and then use that as an advantage or something. But yeah, very hard to do something when you're this close, even when you're this evenly matched in pace. And the good thing was, of course, that there was a huge gap behind. I think the gap behind is about 10 seconds at this point, so we can just pretty much start fighting and we don't have to care about the cars behind us. Even if I would go on a, on a gravel, even if I would spin, I would probably just end up in a second position anyway. And this is not the last lap of the race and I'm actually a, a little far behind than I was uh, hoping for, so I can't really do much to this corner again using all the, traf uh, all the track outside. Yeah, a little bit understeering there. Maybe didn't get the best possible run through the corner. Here I think I'm using a sausage curb quite, uh, quite aggressively there, yes. You can use it quite uh, harsh, but it's a, it's also very easy to lose control there if you bounce to the track in a very unfortunate way. So to say, uh, yeah, here I break very, very late, later than I us usually did, but as you can see, I gained maybe a little, and here again, I'm just like, I'm trying to do something, and here I go on a gravel, didn't matter too much, maybe lost a little bit of time there, got a off track for that, going through the corkscrew, for the last time, just trying to go through it as fast as I can. As we are now heading today, second last corner, which has always been good to me during the race. You can see I'm actually taking it very, like, quite faster than the car in front. I'm trying to hold the inside line, Sweden of it holding it, so I moved it back to the outside. I'm trying to make a move from the outside. I just went too deep there, and that was pretty much my opportunity. To take the take the lead and I felt to do so and that was a very nice racing after all. Even though we weren't swapping positions lap after lap, but it was still quite nice racing and very enjoyable race after all. But yeah, all I wanna say is a massive congratulations to Tsvetanov for the victory. And that's all about it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you and bye bye.